a panel or a stage addresses an audience. This is more like a, what we might call a public think tank. We've invited, it's a discussion between the experts. That is the interesting. That's how we gather knowledge to the project we're working on at the moment. So it's, and then we thought this discussion can also be interesting to others working in the field. So we made it sort of to a public in, in, invitation, but it's really the gathering of knowledge and the discussions among the experts that is the interesting part of the of what you might call the seminar and we're also documenting this for both for spreading and for as uh, minutes of, of the seminar uh, working with this project on our behalf is myself my name is Jaron Bjornberg uh, I work as an analyzer here at the Swedish exhibition agency and also Anna Herlitschka, and mm. I'm here for the project. And I can tell you a bit about the background, but I think Joran mm. could continue telling us a bit about uh, Riksutställningar first. Yeah, we're going to divide it like that. that I'll, I'll start with a sort of framework why Riksutställningar Swedish Exhibition Agency is into a project like this. And then Anna can speak more about the actual project. Uh, I would like to, to connect this with, with two different perspectives within our mission. Uh, our, our main, one of our main missions is that from our contemporary art strategy, we should work for the de development and distribution of contemporary art in Sweden <coughs> with a focus on the exhibition medium. Uh, a mission like this also contains uh, the artists, of course, not just the, the produce of the artist, but also the artists themselves and their working conditions. So that's one angle how this connects to our mission. We also have this mission that we, in cooperation with museums and exhibitioners, develop forms for increased partnerships regarding external and pedagogical activities. And those activities shall be focused towards the development of the exhibition sector through national and international analysis, knowledge development and technical support to stakeholders in the exhibition sector. And I'll get back to that, how it connects to this. This, this is the, our main road that we walk along during the days. But as an authority, <coughs> I think we also have to investigate the ditches, the fields, beside the road and also the woods. We also have to sort of <coughs> step off the path, step off the road sometimes and get into areas that are connected to what we do, but we have to broaden our minds. We have to look elsewhere. We have to look into other sectors. We also have to look into different perspectives that are sort of connected to, to, the, to the main road, the main mission. Uh, In our analysis, we, we, we sort of look at different sides. We can have, we can take a, gr a graph like this. This is how people in Sweden has moved since 1970. The blue line is is uh, like the, the rural. countryside, the rural mm -hmm. countryside, and this is the. Uh, what, what you call suburbs. suburbs and the green line is the big cities and then you have the larger cities and other parts. so you can see there's a strong migration towards the cities which means and uh, my thoughts when I brief analysis on it, about this is we need to build dwelling areas in the city. People need somewhere to, to live. These need to support an intercultural society, so, so social res resilience. We need to build an environmentally sustainable. It's got to be affordable. <coughs> we also spend 85% of our time indoors. We need to find new solutions and methods. And underneath you see this quote from Einstein.
So that's when we started this scheme. It's about a year and a half ago, two years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago. Uh, I was working also then as as head of method development, and I'm also really interested how to develop new methods where, wherever I work or go. Sort of, I think you always have to sort of move forward. You always have to sort of improve how you work because out there everything is moving all the time. Looking. This, this is uh, self-evident to, to, to some of you, but, it, but it's also it says, gives you an angle why we think we, we could work with this within our activities here at the Swedish Exhibition Agency. Uh, I mean, traditionally, of course, you have architects working as a competence within this field and this is a dwelling area which is planned by a Dutch architect bureau in the south of Sweden at the moment where they think social cohesion also is really important as part of the design. You also have a, an architect today like Bjarke Ingels Danish architect who, who, who has sort of brought what you might call Danish alternative thoughts into his architecture. Then you also have the, the designers who were talking about this during the lunch, where if you go back to the, the modernist, when the modernist mo movement came into came into Europe, it was not uncommon that architects or designers were cross-disciplinary. <laughs> People like uh, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe or Geta Magnusson Grossman, for example. Uh, Geta Magnusson Grossman started as a designer, then moved into architecture. The same with Ludwig, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe. And you also have a person like Le Corbusier, <laughs> who's also an artist. No. Hmm? and whatever. But then you have artists who, who also move in the opposite direction, like Hundert Wasser, IWW. So, mainly ends up with, with, with a lot of questions, but I took down a few of them. Like, if you have this, and you can also, I mean, if you want to, to build socially resilient places, should you, and you want to do it in a cross-disciplinary way, should you stop with architects, city planners, designers, artists? What about social psychologists? What about social ge geographs? People like that, who also ha has knowledge about how we used to live and how we should live. In a, in a sustainable way. But the main question is, how does the interface look like where the cross-disciplinary meeting takes place? When we looked at examples in, in the previous phase of the project, we see a lot of parallel projects. We see uh, design or public space design projects which bring artists, but the artists are in the parallel silo usually it's not cross-disciplinary we, we need to find methods we need to find ways for this area where people really meet is there space is there room for open-ended processes does there always have to be a, a budget does there always have to be like uh, an order for, for, for a project? Or is, could, could there be something called like living labs that works from an open-ended process? What does autorism mean to the process? Because you also find that it's important that through projects 
I market my name, I think, I mean, even if you take an artist like that, like uh, Bjarke Ingels, I think it's very important for him to, to be the author of his buildings. But in a, when we talk about cross-disciplinary meetings, the team is more important than the individual, those the individuals that meet in the meeting. Is it possible to see the development of a city as part of a city museum's core mission? A city museum today, I know several city museums are working within the whole city. They're, op they're working in the, in the open public spaces. They're working in dwelling areas, not just in their building. So they're working with people, together with people, in, 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 in the present times, so could they also have, so that's part of the core mission, how to move forward when we plan a city. And what is the contribution of art, if you go back to our mission, that doesn't refer to decoration, installation, or social intervention? Because usually we've, I mean, also when we talk about the uh, the one percent target when it comes to public art is usually as a decoration or maybe an installation. But very seldom we talk about how artists can contrib contribute to the process and the, and the answers to how we live. Because there are many artists today that are dealing with these issues within their art. Mm. I'll end there mm. and leave to Anna to pr talk more about the actual project. But this is sort of some sort of reference to why started. it is interesting for the Swedish Exhibition Agency to sort of look into these aspects and questions. Yes, uh, as you know, my name is Anna Herlitschka. I've been, uh, I have a rather untraditional uh, background for being here at Riksutstelnia since I'm a surveyor, real estate economist. And it, it warms my heart actually, Joran, that you have this uh, uh, picture with building housing in the city and so on, because that was things I, that I was dealing with when I was a PhD student in 1991 in housing. So. What this, this project is doing here is actually tying things together, placing museums and placing the, the exhibition uh, sector in society. And starting with the, the last question here, what is the contribution of art that doesn't refer to decoration? I mean, when you talk, talk about public art in public places, many times it's a bronze cat. We, we choose in this project a bronze cat as a metaphor for what you think that the artist is actually contributing. But I've been working with these issues over a number of years now. Uh, and in the project, the Creative Incubator, it started out as understanding how we could work multidisciplinary with art, culture, architecture and design, for example here in Visby. And we wanted to create an incub incubator where we could test and exploit or explore ideas uh, it turned out to be a report, and that report has now went on to this seminar series, and we don't know actually where we're going to end up with this after the project, but these seminars might be a stepping stone for, for further work, and we have a number of examples here today which we could maybe tie together. There is a project called Samverkans Pro Projektet, a cooperation project made by Boverket, the Swedish Housing Agency, uh, Statens Kulturråd, Konstråd, Kultur, Konstråd uh, uh, Swedish Art Council, uh, uh, Swedish Center for Design and Architecture, d uh, Architecture and Design, sorry, and uh, the fourth one is uh, Riksantikorienbetet, sorry, uh, the Heritage Board. They have been working over four years to understand how you could actually cooperate to get art and culture into the planning process. And they had their presentation now in November and they concluded that cooperation is a hard task. 
And what we want to do over these three seminars is actually exploring where we could create innovation. We will present a number of methodologies that are used to cooperate because people are doing it. Maybe not that much in Sweden, but abroad. So for the creative incubator, <coughs> a number of questions rose from the bottom and we are exploring them in this project. But that is how we could create innovative and explorative environments. How could we create that environment? When I started out as a PhD student, I wanted to do experiments. My friends that were doing their research on laser microscopes, they built a la laser microscope and then they had their PhD. I couldn't do experiments. I had to fall back on statistics and data and how fun was that? But that might create a new business model. I mean, architects have had their same business model for 200, maybe three, four, five hundred years. They're commissioned to draw something. Maybe you need to think new. Do it differently, together with other people. I'm pointing at you now, Janne, <laughs> because you're an architect. And how could uh, design as a process, not design as form or shape or color, but as a process, develop public space? with art and culture? How do we integrate the different competencies? And how could a very traditional sector like the building and developing sector take other competencies into the process without saying, well, we can't have you here because you don't know anything about the planning and building le legislation. So how do we work cross-sectionally? So, if we have art and culture as a part of this traditional process, if we try to recreate it a bit, could we create social sustainability? Could we create function in another way than we're doing it today? Could we create value, not only economical, but also social and cultural and functional value? And is art, culture and the design a factor that could actually be part of regional and local development. And how? I think Gary might touch on that. So today we will hear about, talk about and discuss new methodologies, how we could integrate new methods and ideas in traditional processes, and how and if and why we should conduct experiments. I will stop there. Uh, the order today is that Daniel starts you, could, you must uh, realize that he was up 3.15 today to take the boat from Oskarshamn because somebody <coughs> ran around 10 days ago or a week ago. So Daniel starts talking about how design could influence us. Then we have Gerin talking about open design and uh, uh, design in regional and local context. Henrik will talk about Riksantikvarium Betes open sources and then we will have Marcus telling us about Blockholm games and play. Then we will have a great uh, break and then we continue with the discussions and the workshops. So again, welcome.